Previous living house channels for educational purposes only is not intended as financial advice. It is teaching Tech Tuesday. Let's take a look at one particular setup in the market today using the OSO or OTOCO functionality here on Kraken Desktop. If you do not have a Kraken account, you can use the link in the description of this video to get that set up today. So what a lot of people have trouble with is translating technicals into actual practicality and trading. They can see this moving average, that moving average. They can see the cloud, they can see divergences, they can see all that. But one thing and one step that they have trouble with usually is getting to the actually trade plan. So it doesn't matter what asset this is. It could be anything. It's Pepe in this case, but the first step is obviously trade recognition. Is there anything here that we like based on whatever edge we've back tested or some feeling we have, whatever. Okay. So we can say, we think there might be some sort of pattern here. Let's just say we think that this could be a very poorly drawn wedge. There you go. It's a wedge or some variation of the wedge. We can use lines. We can just say with our mind that this is, this is some sort of wedge. It's sloppy. It's messy, falling wedge, falling puke, whatever you want to think about that as. So that's the first step. Is this a continuation pattern, a reversal pattern? What does this look like on trend, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's what most of this channel tries to help people with. So let's say we have a pattern, we have a range, whatever this may be. Next thing I do is I use the fib tool, take the high, take the low. It'll give you a set of fibs, at least on Kraken, it doesn't go to the 2x fib. It's not really a fib anyway, that's why it's not there. We can use the trend tool to take the high, to take the low. And that will also give you a 2x level. Just We'll just mark a line up here for that at the moment. So this is the range consolidation that we've identified as a pattern that we think will go higher. We're using fibs and the depth of the pattern to find levels. This would be the zone that we would want this to go to. Now we can see currently, not even above the cloud, hasn't really broken out, hasn't really done much of anything. So it's very early. It's a, it's a baby setup in the moment. After the recognition, the next thing you want to do is think about entry, exit, stop loss, which we've basically already identified with the technicals. For entry on wedges, you typically want something towards the end of the point, and then you want a close above resistance. That's how most technical analysis works. Is this perfect in the moment? No, but it's probably good enough here to, to start to take a stab and to think about trading some of this stuff. You can see the, the previous trades I had here. This was pre-cloud entry stuff, and then this was just a vanilla edge to edge, right? Now you could buy more down here. Your stop loss is below the key June. That is a very defined trade that I think a lot of people have identified on various markets, including crypto, and really like that setup a lot. This next setup is not that. This is a pre-Kumo breakout setup in this case, and we're relying on this chart pattern to help us out. So we've identified the chart pattern, we've identified the range, and we've got some pie in the sky target, fine. What we don't yet have is stop loss. So for trades, you can either say, I'm gonna have a stop loss at 5%, 10%, whatever. You know, For some people it's three to 5%, pick a number. Okay, that's one way to do it. In this case, what I would do is say anything that is making lower lows is not for me. I don't want to be living down here. So will that adjust an entry? Perhaps. But ultimately, if the pattern is puking out of the tip of the triangle on the falling wedge, it's not working out, right? It's beyond repair at that point. So we have a soft entry. We have a pretty firm stop loss. And we have a range for an exit. Using the order sends order functionality, TPSL functionality, we can set that all up all in one go and then just forget about it and just let it do its thing. This may take six months to play out, right? I don't know. This could take a very long time to play out. But ultimately, one thing you definitely do not want, if this is really bullish, is new lower lows. That's all you don't want. That's all you don't want to see. So the first way I would do this as an example is on the chart directly. You'll see this little plus sign on my cursor here. And we can click any point and we can set an order. So let's say we want one of our limit orders down here and an amount and that gets added to the chart. So we have our, our limit order here. If we don't like that level or we fat fingered something, we can adjust it and confirm it and it will move it up or down. So that's setting the limit order. 
You can see this TPSL functionality. If you hover over the TP, click drag, let's say okay. There's one of our take profits, release, click again, we're confirming. Now we have a limit order set here. We have a take profit already set before the trade even moved, before the trade's even in motion. And you can start to see that on the ladder set up here, in case you're curious. And the last thing here, of course, obviously, is the stop loss. Again, you're clicking, dragging, moving it down, confirming. And now we have the full complement of anything you want in any trade. Entry, exit, stop loss. And you can, of course, adjust any of these at will, and it will automatically update them. So I think for most people, this is where they're going to want to work. They're going to want to work on the chart. At least I do. I'm hyper visual. I want to see this on the chart directly. Another thing we could do is go to the order form, the bottom right here. Let's say we want a limit or a trailing limit or any different type of order here. We want to have this on OTOCO. That'll set this up in manual form here where we, where we can type this in. But let's say we want, I don't know, $50 worth of Pepe, whatever it is. Take profit this time is going to be, this is probably 150%. Stop loss is going to be probably around 5%, something like that. Click the review button. You'll see that in the order form there. We can confirm that. And now we can see the stop loss on the chart. We can also see the other target on the chart and we can adjust that based on the range. The order already triggered actually as I executed it in the, the order form here. But if you want exact percentages through the order form is a great way to do that because you can see, you know, I want entry distance based on XYZ rather than price, which may be easier for some of these meme coins to, because you don't have to type in five zeros every time. The third way you can do this is on the ladder order form. Click the attach OSO. One order sends order button. One triggers the order or one triggers the other to cancel an order. It's a mouthful. We have to select these options to turn that stuff on. And again, we type in quantity, some amount. Let's say we want, again, somewhere in that range. We'll go 05 here. We can go 85. Let's say we want to buy here. And in the ladder itself, you can see the select take profit has been highlighted. Let's say we want something way up there, right? Click again, it'll show up on the order book. And then if we go back to this, you can see the select SL pop up there and you can click some level that is appropriate. And you'll see all these orders on your chart on the right side here. You can see the green is the limits and th then these would be the stop losses and then these would be the take profit levels. Another way you can verify your orders is by looking at the trade activity tab. Click the cog here, module type trade activity. And we go into open orders. You can see there's the buy, there's the take profit, there's the stop loss. So it's all there for you either visually or in the trading activity tab. And again, for most people, it's probably just going to be easier to click on the chart, select buy or sell, click and drag profit, click and drag stop loss and be done with it. And if you don't like that, and you want specific percentage entries, you can also set this up here. One benefit of this again is it's a one and done approach where maybe you want a certain percentage nibbling in this idea, in this position, no matter, again, it doesn't matter what it is. It's Pepe in this case, but let's say you want to get started in a position and you don't want to forget about it. You don't want to figure about why you did what you did and everything on the chart again, it's already set up and ready to go based on where you have your orders. It also gets you in the habit of actually having a stop loss on this stuff and actually having a take profit level based on some analysis, ideally. You know, ideally it's not just, oh, we're going to pick some silly 500% level and call it a day. Eventually over time, you'll start to hone that and select common sense stuff depending on market conditions. So I'd say right now, Pepe is probably one of the better examples just to, as a as a tradable setup. You always want a somewhat defined entry, exit, stop loss. Once this starts to break out, then you can start to manage this maybe with a trailing stop loss or with Williams Fractals. That's beyond the scope of this video. But at least in the early stages of this, where it really hasn't yet done anything, had a good bounce, recovered a couple of days, bullish engulfing, dragonfly, etc. Starting to look good. Still could easily fail. Still could require a double bottom, triple bottom before pouncing. And maybe you don't like that stop loss. Maybe you like it slightly lower. That's fine. You can move it around, right? We can just select it and we can click and drag it. We can say, no, we want some of the position down here. We want to give some of the position a wider berth for downside, whatever it is. You can, you can do all that through the chart here. So I hope that was helpful. 
for the OSO, OTO, CO orders on Kraken Desktop. Again, if you don't have an account, you can set one up for free using the link in the description of this video. That's all for this one. If you like, dislike, comment, share, subscribe. Happy trading.